Before we get started, I do want to share a little bit about what the program is, obviously, and how it came to be. The initial idea behind the Colleague Connector program and the foundation for really what we've built here was created by an OEN working group that came out of our summit back in 2018. And then kind of fast forwarding through pandemic times, we all know that there is was kind of more this pressing need, continues to be this pressing need for the opportunity for members to connect with one another in meaningful ways amidst this kind of transition to work from home and lack of in-person interaction in our day-to-day -day lives on campus. So we thought, needless to say, that this would be a perfect time to roll out our pilot program. And how it works is that we have an application process that has a number of questions about kind of who an individual is, the work that they do at their institution and in open educational resources. And based on that application information, we then pair OEN members one-on-one -on -one with one another based on that content. So their complementary goals, experience, and expertise. Um, and then over the course of the academic year, we do host a kickoff session with the whole group of participants so they can meet one another. And then um, monthly, we pairs are then encouraged to meet with each other one on one over the course of the year to discuss their open education initiatives, bounce ideas off one another, share, learn from each other. And even as we put in this event description to commiserate at times. Um, and then we send out monthly emails to participants uh, that include conversa conversation prompts in case they need a bit of in, uh, inspiration for topics to discuss. And these prompts touch on more philosophical motivations for working in open, as well as kind of the, the hard, more nitty gritty of the day-to-day -day work that they can discuss. So um, through this one-on-one -on -one pairing, we really hope to facilitate that relationship building and connection within our OEN community, and hopefully, obviously, um, encourage the professional growth of both of the people participating in the, in the pair uh, through their collaboration over the course of the program. So I'm just going to kind of leave it at that as an intro. We'll dig more deeply into this as our pairs share. Um, and without further ado, we'll kind of transition into the panel. I am super excited. Um, you know, we've got some program participants in the audience, if you will, today. And then we've got four panelists, um, so two pairs who will be sharing. Uh, Kathy Germano, the Director of Learning Services at Excelsior College, and Veronica Bielet, the Student Success Librarian at Wayne State University. And then Ashley Morrison, the Open Education Librarian at the University of Texas at Austin, who is paired with Mika Hoffman, Executive Director at the Center for Educational Measurement, which is also at Excelsior College. And then managing the chat today and kind of answering any questions that you might drop in there, which we welcome you to do over the course of the panel, is, our, is another pair, Jessica Kirshner, the OER Librarian at Virginia Commonwealth, University and Mandy Goodset, the Performing Arts and Humanities Librarian and OER and Copyright Advisor at Cleveland State University. So we've got an all-star panel here who are gonna share some great information with you. Um, and we will kind of hop right into that. So starting, I think with Kathy and Veronica, um, if you both could add any additional context perhaps about what motivated you to join the program. Um, let's begin there. Hello, everyone. Um, Kathy Germano. Um, I was really motivated because I, you know, I was looking for connections and really getting in touch with other members in the open community. Hi, I'm Veronica Bielot, and um, I was really interested in trying trying to um, maintain momentum with someone. And I felt like a program like this where I could connect with somebody else who was really interested in um, OER could help, um, help with that. Thank you both. And Ashley and Mika, what were kind of some of your motivations for joining the program? Well, uh, 
mine was more transactional. Kathy and I were talking about this. You know, she's much more of a networker, get to know people and sort of build the network person. And I'm much more task oriented. So for me, it was like, can anybody help me figure this piece out? <laughs> and so my motivation was really, you know, I know there's all kinds of stuff out there and it's so overwhelming to like go on the open web or any you know search for things and i figured okay if i can talk to a person maybe they can guide me through some of this and my motivations were pretty similar to some that i've already heard i've always found myself gravitating toward opportunities for informal community um the the types of partnerships you have like sometimes you can only have with people outside of your organizations who are really in the weeds with you on a day-to-day -day basis i i love the opportunity to talk to people who are outside of all of that and can offer advice on things that aren't colored by uh, how things have always been done at an institution for example so that's been great for me such a good point we get so kind of in our trench that that fresh perspective can be really helpful Awesome. Thank you. Well, um, in terms of the partnership itself, what has been the most beneficial aspect of connecting with your partner? We'll start again with Kathy and Veronica. I would say it's the humanizing part of it, you know, um, being able to just talk informally with um, Veronica and, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with feeling connected and, you know, when you have this very big open community and, you know, just coming into it for the first time, it can be very intimidating. So I really like that human touch that you know this program offers um instead of just joining a membership and then trying to figure it out you can work with somebody so that was it for me i am um, i really it's it's been so nice talking to kathy we um we kind of meet every almost every other week now um, just informally and in the morning, have our coffee and just uh, chat about what's going on. And, um, and I think um, what, what's been really nice is Kathy has such a different role than me that I've really learned to look at things from a different perspective and sort of um, see those commonalities, even though we're from really different uh, different kinds of institutions. So sort of to echo what Ashley said about, you know, getting out of that trench and really seeing things from a broader perspective was really helpful. And, um, and it really, I think what's been really beneficial is um, how, how much I've uh, learned, how, how much we could learn from each other. I found out about so many organizations and other approaches that, um, Kathy has shared with me that she's used. It's been, that's been really, really super helpful. Awesome. Thank you. I think, you know, thinking of finding the commonalities, I like how you said that Veronica, because also that can really help in terms of how you, you know, modify your communications to other partners around campus too. I hadn't really thought about that. Awesome. How about um, Ashley and Mika? What would you say has been the most beneficial aspect of connecting with one another? I can say on a tactical level, I have really benefited from Mika's expertise. Uh, she is an assessment and measurement guru, which is really one of the very specific tasks I was struggling with when we started meeting. So um, for me, there were really immediate wins as I um, bounced ideas off of her. The timing was good um, because our students were launching a campus-wide survey around cost-related issues. So it was, it was great just to be able to kind of share where I was and hear how she would approach certain things because, again, her expertise is just so different than mine. And that's where going back to the other theme, just being able to get out of the 
pretty siloed work that mine often is, and I bet a lot of yours are as well. Um, I'm the only person who's doing OER full time on my campus, though I do have a lot of colleagues who are really engaged in the work. It's just so nice to be able to connect with people who, um, even if it's not their only responsibility, um, are, are really focused on the same thing. So uh, it's also nice just to have somebody to vent to who doesn't know the same people that you do. So <laughs> that comes up. <laughs> commiserating. <laughs> Mika, how about you? I guess, I mean, to add to that, I'll say that um, because Ashley and I have such different areas of expertise, it was really helpful. It's like, I don't know all the platforms. So she sends me this whole spreadsheet with here's some pros and cons and here's everything. It's like, oh, wow, there's lots of information out here. So it was really, um, you know, having somebody who ha was I, I don't, further along in the sense of, you know, having taken some of those initial steps in figuring out how to implement some of these things and being able to say, well, here's some tools that, that you might find useful as you're, as you're looking at things. That was really helpful. I appreciate you both kind of speaking to your complementary skills. Um, and actually, especially Ashley, when you mentioned the um, Mika being the assessment guru, that just kind of, I know we don't have the application process open at the moment, but I did want to mention that, um, you know, based on how Mika and Ashley filled out their application and talked about the own, their skills that they bring to the table, as well as kind of the gaps that they were looking to fill and learn more about, that allowed us as the matching team to kind of be like, hey, Mika is the assessment guru. And here's Ashley mentioning that that's a skill that she'd like to build through participation in this program. And we were able to make that match, which it sounds like has been um, a success in that sense. So just a reminder for those of you who are participating, thinking about participating in the next round of the program to keep that in mind when you're filling out the application, not only kind of what you're looking to get out of this, but we love the, the reciprocity in these relationships. So also what you have to give and offer because you all have great things to offer. And I just wanna to emphasize too, one of the things that Ashley and I have talked about in our conversations and Ashley mentioned about being sort of siloed, um, you know, most of us have our professional networks where we can get various sorts of information, but being able to find somebody who you wouldn't otherwise talk to because they're not in your professional network, you know, they're not a librarian or they're not an assessment person or they're in a different field, that's really useful just getting that completely different perspective on things. Thank you, Mika. That's a good point. All right, transitioning to our next question. Um, you know, you come into this program with ideas of what it's gonna be like. What would you say, uh, starting with Kathy and Veronica, has surprised you most about participating in the program? Surprised me the most. All right, well, one thing that, if you take the surprise part out, um, one thing about this um, community is how kind, and generous overall there is. So if you're new to it, I would say don't be surprised because the more you connect with people, the more you will see how generous this is. And, and it won't be surprised. At first you might think like, wow, somebody reached out to me. But the other thing about it is that we've mentioned before that there's so many different approaches. There's a lot of complexity to this landscape. There's all kinds of different things. And, and it's a great way to just keep moving those boundaries and, and you know opening up the way you feel about what you can do and what you can accomplish and who you can talk to. So I would say, um, don't be surprised, but um, it, it, it's definitely, um, something that is, I think, you, unique to this kind of community. I would so echo what Kathy said about um, generosity and kindness. And, um, and I think, you know, it, if, when I first saw this program, I thought, oh God, this is something that I really have to do, but I'm just, um, you know, it, it's, um, 
if if you're a shy person by nature, which I, is how I feel that I am, although most people would disagree with that. I guess I'm an introverted extrovert. I, I think there's something like that. Um, so I was, you know, I was a little nervous. I was really grateful for the prompts because I was like, okay, I've got things we can talk about. And it was just so easy, um, you know, to connect with Kathy and just share what, um, what, what we were hoping to learn and just bring questions to each other. So I think, I think that really surprised me. And again, that we could come from such different places in our institutions, but yet share so many common concerns um, and challenges and, and think about different ways that we're each working through those and share those. It was really, that was great. I would just like to add to that is that sometimes we would come and we didn't have an agenda. It was just like, let it go. And that's a good thing about this program is you don't have to have an outcome at the end. It can just happen. And that is really a good feeling because we all know we have 80 million things going on, but this is not like all those other things. This is very light, very easy in what you, you know, put to it. So. I appreciate that, Kathy, kind of that organic side of, of how this program works. It's like also coming back to the conversation prompts. They're there for people to use kind of like Veronica's saying, like, oh, I don't really know, kind of almost as a security blanket. Um, but pairs are encouraged to just do whatever feels right to them over the course of the program. Okay, Ashley and Mika, what has surprised you most? We didn't think there was that much surprising about the conversation I don't think I mean you know we just started chatting <laughs> and there there you go I mean there were there were surprises in terms of what we learned from each other I mean like I was I was you know I knew that she was an OER librarian so I'm like well she must have everything figured out and complete buy-in from upper management and I found out that that's not necessarily true when <laughs> <laughs> so I learned something, but I don't think there was anything surprising about, you know, just being paired up with somebody to chat. It was, it fulfilled my expectations. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh, Mika and I are in such different institutions and such different positions. Um, and you might expect for that reason that all of our challenges would be really different. But like Mika was saying, they they aren't. Um, the specifics of them are different, um, but we're still both early in our programs. And I think that that's something that, that brought us together. Um, and I think too, as she talked about, you know, administration buy-in, her faculty buy in, instructor buy in, and maybe the specific um, objections that I hear are different, but the ones that Mika shared made me think about the types of objections that my folks might have, but aren't verbalizing necessarily. So that encouraged me to think about my own campus in a different way too. Again, despite being really different types of institutions and having maybe different early roadblocks to, um, to our OER initiatives. Great, thank you. I bet Ashley did wish she had all of those things, Mika, that maybe you assumed, <laughs> don't we all? Awesome, okay, so the, the last question that we're gonna ask the panelists before we open it up to, to you all to ask your questions, what, uh, starting with Kathy and Veronica once again, what would you say to people who are considering participating in next year's program? Um and we've touched on this before, it's the value of collaborating both internally and externally with somebody um, outside your state, outside your um, title, that there's so much to be gained by learning from different um, perspectives. And, and for me, um, I feel like I got a double blessing because um, Mika was here to share the ride with me, you know, carrying everything on your shoulders is really difficult. And if you're in a small institution like ours, you know, um, it takes a lot of work and, you know, and I've been trying to do so much work for so long that, you know, it really pays. And I think that this 
is the first of its kind that I saw where there is this humanistic element to the program and, and I welcome it and I really encourage you to apply and um, participate because you get a lot out of it. I think just to, to support that, it's really like, it's been, you know, you, you get out of it what what you make of it and what you um, what you want of it. And, and I think um, just echoing what Kathy said earlier about there not being a required outcome is, is really nice and liberating because you don't, you don't have to feel like, oh, I haven't accomplished A, B, or C. I don't have to prepare for a meeting. I don't have to you know, do those kinds of things. It's really about sharing and just kind of building. And, um, and, and again, for me, it's been, it's been really good to, um, to just have this on my radar more frequently. Um, I'm sure for many of us, it's, um, you know, you might be um, the OER librarian, or just the champion and advocate without even a formal title and um, not much else behind you. So, so having, you know, keeping that motivation can be a little challenging sometimes. And so this is definitely um, an extrinsic motivator to, to keep moving forward. Okay, thank you, Ashley and Mika. Yeah, I would echo a lot of what I heard from Kathy and Veronica. Um, this is really worthwhile. It is such a low time commitment. Um, uh, they were saying, you know, you don't have to do a ton of planning for it. There are prompts provided for you, though I don't think Mika and I often turn to the prompts because we already had plenty to talk about each time pretty organically. Um, and there's no expectation of outcomes and pressure. So that's different for me too than some other programs that I've participated in where you are working together towards some kind of specific outcome or deliverable or project. It is so nice to have interactions that aren't dependent on an outcome or having to work together a lot outside of that. I, I really appreciated the low pressure aspect of this um, and how easy it was just to make conversations. So I would say that even if you don't go through a program like this that has some structure to it, I would think about how you can build relationships like these with colleagues outside of your institution that don't have high expectations or expected outcomes. Um, reach out to people whose work you admire, um, especially if you are somebody who's working solo on programs on your campus. I think that all of those types of interactions are really valuable. And I would also add, um, I, I liked the, the attention given to pairing people up so that it wasn't just some kind of random pairing, that there was some thought given to um, how people would complement each other, but you don't always know what you don't know, and you don't always know what your own strengths are necessarily. So what I would say is, you know, don't get too hung up on trying to find somebody who matches exactly what you think you're missing, or who can benefit from what you think your strength is, because you're going to discover with your partner that, you know, maybe it never occurred to you that your institution has this resource. I mean, maybe you knew about it, but you just took it for granted, and you thought everybody had it. And then all of a sudden, you realize that your partner doesn't have that resource and you can provide something that you didn't even know was a strength that you had. Or maybe, you know, you think you know where you're going with something, but based on conversations with your partner, you realize, oh gosh, I need more help with this. So I, I would say it's not a transactional mapping of you do this and I do that and, and, and that's how it works. It's much more organic than that. Thank you all um, for sharing that. And um, I've even got a lot of gears moving on from your comments on kind of how to talk about the program moving forward. So I really appreciate you sharing your perspectives. Um, and then also kind of coming back to a comment Ashley made about the time commitment. I did want to mention that um, there is some facilitated conversation in the beginning of the program where we do encourage partners to really go through your expectations of participation your availability, your communication styles, to really set those that as a foundation from the beginning of the program. So 
if you are, um, you know, we're all very strapped for time. If you're really kind of worried about that aspect of the program, there is that opportunity to speak clearly about that with your pair from the get-go and figure out a way that works for both of you to connect uh, with, within your schedule. All right, well, um, before we transition to the Q&A, um, we had, I think it was Jessica's idea or Kathy, one of the two, they were on the planning committee for this event, but we we're like, how can we get creative and have a little fun with this before we just transition to Q&A? And they came up with the great idea for our panelists to find a GIF that represents their feelings or their experience participating in the program. So I'm gonna have, panelists drop those gifts in the chat, which don't worry for those of you who may click on them. Um, I think it is going to be a link that you're going to have to click on to see it. They are safe links to follow, but I welcome everybody to do that. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to end the recording so that we can uh, set the tone for the question and answer session.